Eco Nito, October 2020 in Central Oregon. Lots of overcast. I need some power. There's been overcast all day. There will be overcast all day tomorrow. So how to get power when the campgrounds are full. And even if I could get in a campground, I don't want to pay for it. Uh, as expensive as they are on the West Coast, they're highly competitive to get in. It takes a lot of time planning on how to get into a campground. So I have a hack right here. Now over there is a, um, a makeshift campground where they have um, some homeless people living in RVs, but they're running generators over there. I don't want to be doing that. Generator pollutes. I want to do some clean, get some clean power. Yeah, I don't know what the source of this power is, but increasingly this grid power is becoming more renewable sourced. So the purpose of the electric vehicle charger is to reduce dependency on non-renewable energy and also reduce the odds of going to war with the country so that we can get our greedy hands on some oil. All right, so this is called a J1772 charger. Some of them will uh, require payment. This one sort of does. This only costs uh, about, well, it said it's four cents per minute usage. But every time I use this, and I've used it several times, they only charge me a couple pennies to use it for several hours, maybe due to the low energy draw of my RV system. Blink is one of my favorite ones because almost all of them work with this special adapter. In the description below, I will have a link to my website explaining where you can get these parts and all that. And so, yeah, the purpose of this is to uh, help with the environment when I'm having trouble getting solar power. Like, for example, I have 660 watts of solar panel up on top, which is quite a lot for a 20-foot vehicle, but that's been insufficient during the day. All day long, it's been cloudy like this, so at the most, I've had maybe 75 watts coming in at one time, and my consumption inside is higher than that, so I needed some assistance. And I didn't want to run a polluting, noisy generator and I didn't want to be driving around using the alternator to charge because this vehicle is diesel powered. So this is not an electric vehicle. This is the world's first electric vehicle hack on a motorhome. No one's ever done this before. I've been doing this since December 2018. So at the time of this video, for about two years I've been testing this. And it works on many electric vehicle chargers but not all this is j1772 so i cannot plug this into a tesla charging station unless i use a special adapter which is about 200 dollars i'm thinking about ordering one to try it i'm not sure if it's going to work because these these chargers although they're very simple there's nothing complicated in them sometimes they can detect something strange about this connection and it will create a fault cut off and won't let me charge blink's been generous about it some other companies uh, their chargers don't let me charge sometimes like with this one i had to connect using my app just to get it going so i had to create a simple account with blink and and uh, charge my account uh, with something like ten dollars i think is the minimum at the time of this video also um when i usually and more dependent on electric vehicle charging in the, in the winter because of the overcast. And it's usually colder in the winter, and so this allows me to also use an electric heater with this so I get free heat at night when it's cold rather than burning my diesel heater that's built in the vehicle that I installed. This is a, a, a possibly the world's most advanced RV at the time of this video. Not not for a long time. I'm sure in a few years, others will come up with something. But uh, this one, as of the time of this video, is extremely complicated. I think we're about done outside. Let's go look inside and see what's going on. Here on my dash, I have a meter that says 119 volts. So that's only because it's pulling a reading off of one leg of this connection. It's really a 240 volt system. And so my electric heater, special heater I had to install is 240 volts also. And those are hard to find. And I will uh, try to find you a, a good link 
in the description. Now the reason why I have a meter here for the electric vehicle charger, which is connected uh, to the line, to the electric vehicle charger, not this one down here, that's for the Tesla battery, but this one up here, that one, so when I put the key in the ignition and try to take off, I will be reminded, don't, no, not so fast, you have to unplug first because this will take off plugged in. And so um, that's you. You're gonna you're gonna have to have an, a reminder like that to let you know that you are plugged in. Because electric vehicles, you cannot take off while you're plugged in. But with this hack, you can for now. Let's go back here and see what's going on. Now I think in the future this is going to become a lot more popular, where camper vans can plug into EV charging stations more legitimately. So this website I built, I have lots of details that I'm not going to go over. I'm not going to read all this. It's econeto.org forward slash EV dash charging. And you can get um, these unique details you won't find anywhere else unless someone copied me. Um, you don't want to be doing this in a big RV because you'll get busted. It, that, that will look obvious that you're taking up many parking spaces. Um, this vehicle that I'm in is 20 feet. That should be the most, that should be the longest vehicle you're doing this with. Otherwise, you're going to start creating a bad name for us. So don't do it with something longer than 20 feet. And don't do it with something that's obviously an RV. Um, my vehicle is a stealth vehicle in fact you know in the front dash i have a um hard hat to make it look like i'm a utility worker like i have a purpose here i don't like deceiving people but i'm surviving i'm trying to you know until i buy a home which i haven't found the right one yet so down here what we have going on is the charger um the, e, the ISDT T8 is the one I recommend if you're going to be using an EV uh, battery pack. This one, that I, this battery pack I have came out of a Rec Tesla Model S. So it's very powerful density, a very high density, powerful battery at 233 amp hours, 24 volt lithium ion cobalt, a dangerous chemistry. So that's why the electronics are so complicated in here is so that these things can monitor the battery and shut off if there's a problem. That's basically my uh, BMS hack. Um, I'm going to shut this off so it's not as loud. So I I use this as also a hack. This came, this um, I think this came from my air conditioner and I hacked into it and have this extension cord hacked onto it that goes um, through this box to the EV charger. And so I use this cord to let me know the EV charger is on and I can use this to turn the charger on and off because this charger does not have an on and off switch. That charger does have a built-in balancer which is necessary for uh, charging a battery that does not have a BMS battery management system. You can use any um, battery you want to uh, for charging and it does not have to be lithium does not have to be an EV battery it can be just a normal gel or deep cycle or whatever here is the well it's not really proprietary it's a special order 20 240 volt electric heater that I can use with this plug so I unplug the charger and plug this in instead for free heat at night if my battery is charged up during the day or something similar to that so i get free heat at night without burning diesel this is my diesel heater down there and okay since i turned off the charger i'm going to turn it back on just to show you how to how it works okay so it's pretty simple i just push the center button select the amount of amps I chose 28 out of 30 I don't like doing 30 because it tends to freak the charger out 
overwhelms it and then you just go down to start and push the center the button and it's automatically going to be charging but I think it's already about charged up enough so I don't really need to have it on I don't like keeping it fully charged for a long time I don't think that's healthy for the battery because it needs to be a, probably at its nominal voltage around 20 23 volts um, for longevity of the battery another environmental friendly feature of using an EV charger in the RV is that you're going to allow the battery and electronics to last longer because if your battery goes too low for example with the Tesla module the voltage cannot go below 19.8 I think what is it here are the specs this is useful also if you want to get a, a Tesla battery uh, this applies for the Model S and the Model X. So the lowest would be 19.8. If it goes below that, you're going to damage the battery. And that's an environmental disaster because now that battery is complete trash. And you're going to have to take it for recycling and buy a new battery. So these uh, plugging into EV charging station will help prevent that environmental disaster. Also what I like is uh, EV chargers, charging stations have their own cord here. Um, sometimes they're very long, sometimes they're short. This is about a medium length one you see here. This is in Carlsbad, California where I first hooked this up. You can see it's mounted on a different location of the vehicle than where it is now because um, I liked it. I, I like uh, where I moved it in the center so I can pull in or back in and have that midway point um, you can get an extension cord too, but it's going to be kind of bulky and expensive. So I'm trying to avoid that. I mentioned the future. I think in the future this is becoming, this is going to be very popular. So I'm ahead of our time right now in 20, uh, starting in, uh, well right now 2020, but started in 2018 doing this. I'm probably at least five plus years ahead of um, the future, uh, ahead of my time because um I think this is going to be a really practical way for people to travel and live off grid eventually and um and you'll be able to to give back power to the grid and maybe even get paid for it this way uh for example if you're charging i mean if you're plugged in while you have a lot of solar um solar opportunity during the day then you'll have more power um, from your solar charging than you will need you can give that back to the grid I forgot if I mentioned because this is about the fourth remake of this video I'm trying to perfect it a little bit uh, for you so it won't be such an annoying video uh, so there's no shortage of those on YouTube uh, so if I didn't mention I want to mention don't try to do this in a longer vehicle over 20 feet I'm pretty sure I mentioned it but it's very important so I'm going to mention it again don't don't be pulling up in a class C or a class A, uh, for example, trying to do this because you're going to ruin this for all of us. And the reason is because you're conspicuously looking like a non-RV um, who's consuming power for your RV living, which is not bad, not a bad thing. But people don't understand. Um, here are the uh, the parts list. I'll be updating this currently. The J1772 adapter. Is not available from any reliable source I'll be updating that the mounting instructions general notes for safety and all that you need to read that all right uh, so I um, I've been doing this um, like I said for since December 2018 and I've had to rework the wiring quite a bit since then and I'm not a formal electrician if you want to do something like this, you want to make sure that you're well experienced, you're well, that you're well qualified regarding safety of, of a 240 volt AC and 12 or 24, or maybe even 48 volt DC, depending on what your system is, you're going to know, you're going to need to be very competent with AC and DC electrical um, engineering uh, before you do something like this. And you won't be able to hire anyone to do this. I'm not for hire um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, so I provide as much for free to you as I can on the internet. That's all you're going to get. There's no no consultation available from me. Uh, 
and I don't think there will be. Uh, I have too many other things to do. So I'm going to provide as much as I can online. If you have any recommendations on how I can do this better, please let me know and then I'll update the website to benefit everybody. Because I know I didn't do this perfectly. Uh, people especially don't like the way my wires are complicated. But this is kind of like a little spaceship. If you look at spaceships, they look the same. They're complicated. You're trying Because we're trying to get a large amount of stuff in a very small spot. This is not a Class A motorhome where I have room to spread everything out and make it all nice and neat and pretty. This is a 20 foot long um, Class B Sprinter custom built motorhome that the space I have is extremely limited. So uh, and that's why it looks like a rat's nest a little bit. And, and that actually looks pretty neat compared to so some of the first installs that I had and so I really welcome your comments and everything like that uh, thanks for the standard ways you support uh, stuff that you like take care